this is what it looks like today, and that's what it looked like when she went missing. A familiar feeling of hope as law enforcement and Texas EquiSearch volunteers crowd around. Fingers crossed, and, and let's hope that today is the day for this family and, and for law enforcement and everybody involved, especially the community. In the last episode of Dayton 24-7 Now's podcast, Missing Erica Baker, our podcast team uncovered a park that was never searched until today. And ultimately, some of the, the paperwork that you guys went to brought us here. Yeah, mushy. We asked the past and present detectives on the case and Texas EquiSearch to help us search. Another depression over here. 20 minutes into our search. Let's stop there. Yeah. Something in it. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's a bone. Yeah. Huh? It's a bone. Inside that sheet? Inside yeah. that sheet. The Bureau of Criminal Investigation was called in, along with the Green County Coroner's Office, to examine the bones further. It's a glimmer of hope. I mean, that bone is, I mean, it looks small, but again, a nine-year-old, they're not, they're not that big anyway. The findings, promising, but ultimately disappointing. After so many searches, it's just another area that we cleared. And that's the way you got to look at it, after, especially after all these years. But hope still isn't lost, and this case is not cold. I appreciate, like, EquiSearch and all the people and the feedback from the podcast. That's what got us out here. You guys took the time to do the podcast. It has brought more attention to the case, as which we have to do you know we're not going to give up and the, the podcast has been very successful and so that was Brent Caswell reporting obviously and so the Green County coroner actually called the remain findings that you guys found inhuman yeah investigators believe the bones actually collected from a dog however mm -hmm. they've been sent off to a lab for DNA testing to make sure they are not human okay so this is sort of interesting when they found those bones you could tell everyone kind of got a little excited on the scene and I know you were mentioning it to me throughout the morning what, I guess, was with them that kind of maybe got them a little more excited? Well, what was strange was it was clearly like a shallow grave mm -hmm. based off of the probing that they were doing there. And when they started to dig, they found pieces of fabric, and one of them was very clearly a bed sheet. It actually looked like a bed sheet from like the 1980s or 1990s. So seeing that Erica Baker had gone missing in 99, that automatically you know, raised a lot of suspicions from everybody. That's why they handled this with such care. Uh, normally they would go and remove some of the bones a little bit more before they call the authorities mm -hmm. in to just verify. Uh, but because of the sensitivity of this case, they called in the Green County coroner right away and came out there to identify the bones. The strange thing though is they were dog bones, but there was no skull hmm. in the grave. So. Uh, some strange things out there. Hopefully, though, we'll know confirmation-wise two to three weeks. Is that what you were saying? Yes, ma'am. Okay, two to three weeks, and of course, we'll keep you updated on that information. So if you would like to listen to the Missing Erica Baker podcast, scan that QR code you see right there on your screen. Or visit Dayton247L.com and click on Missing Erica Baker tab. You can listen to this season wherever you listen to podcasts.